Rechristening and the rededication of the Minnehaha streetcar boat. We're here at the Excelsior Park docks getting ready to see the first maiden voyage of the Minnehaha. It's been a real special day for a lot of people. There's been over 80,000 hours of volunteer work put into the restoration of this particular vessel. So today is going to be a grand affair. There's going to be a you and ladies are all dressed for the occasion. Turn so that our camera can get your beautiful gown. Turn around too so you see the back. Oh, you look so gorgeous. Can you tell us a little bit about your dress? Well, the dress uh, bodice I actually received from my husband's grandmother and uh, the silk on it didn't last the many, many years it's, it's been in existence, so we recreated parts of it, and we have some other family heirlooms uh -huh. and some newer parts uh -huh. all to put together for a special time. It looks time. beautiful. Thank you. Okay, and we have some very special people here. These people own the Excelsior Park, and <laughs> this is Joanna Baim and Fred Baim. And so tell us now, I know that you've been involved with this whole thing as the, the excitement's been mounting. How does it feel for you today? It feels wonderful. I'm telling you, we are so excited about that beautiful boat being at our home, Excelsior Park. It's going to live there forever. And, you know, this is really only the first stage of this because by next year there'll be a streetcar running right down the trail and a museum and they have so many plans it's just spectacular so we feel very fortunate to be a part of this okay. and <laughs> your talk <laughs> there's nothing else to say <laughs> bringing the fun back to excelsior park yeah, yeah. that's our mission Well, we, uh, for uh, safety's sake and everything, we are going with uh, what we're calling experienced uh, engineers and trainees. Um, on every shift, there will be an experienced engineer and uh, a, a trainee with, along with, just for learning experiences and, and for safety. Mm -hmm. As an engineer, what do you actually have to do? Well, we're in charge of the power plant. We're in charge of the generator on board, uh, the engine, the boiler, and uh, basically the propulsion systems. All right. Can you go into some detail on how this whole thing makes the boat move? Well, what you're looking at is an O'Connor uh, triple expansion steam engine. Uh, there's a high pressure, an intermediate, and a low pressure cylinder. And what you're seeing there is the, the cranks uh, and the connecting rods of, of each of the cylinders. And the high pressure, uh, right now you're looking at the low pressure crank. Okay. And then there, are the eccentrics there, moving up the one space there, is uh, the eccentrics running the valving for the low pressure cylinder. And then as you move up the engine, it's, it's just duplicated. Okay, so those are little oil trays there on the top there? You have to keep oiling those? Yes, those are uh, uh, drip oilers down on the eccentrics, and we've, we've gotten it down now to where most of the oiling is automatic, although we still have to, there is still some manual oiling on, on the engine. So I was told that uh, the original engineers would have to walk around with an oil can and keep everything oiled. Is that true? Well, that's true then, and it's true now. Yes, <laughs> uh, we do have to, like I say, there is some uh, manual oiling left on it. So how much oil would you go through in a voyage such as we had today, say an hour long voyage? Oh, all told, maybe maybe a quart all. Uh, okay. Then what is this now, this big green apparatus behind this engineer, what is that? That's our boiler. Um, actually, the boiler is sitting way down low underneath there. We have all kinds of piping and uh, up above there is our feed water tank. And that's a Cleaver Brooks oil-fired boiler. 
Are you using lake water to uh, run the steamboat? Uh, no, we we are running off of uh, soft water, soft city water, and uh, we're just using uh, lake water to run through our condenser. To keep it cool? Yes, okay. to condense the steam back down into water, and then we could, it's a closed system, we re reuse the uh, water. But that isn't the original way, that's just what you're doing now because of uh, the quality of the water in Lake Minnetonka, perhaps? Well, quality of the water and pollution concerns and uh, just longevity of the boiler. We can get a lot more years out of, out of the boiler by using soft water in a closed system. So does, uh, as an engineer, you need to have someone standing down there all the time, an engineer standing by that engine all the time? That's correct, because it, it, it's a, this boat it was originally run, well, it is now too, uh, on a teamwork approach, basically. Uh, there's the pilot who rings the signals, and then the engineer has to execute them, and the engineer has to be ready at all times to answer any, any bell signal of what the pilot wants. to uh, just make absolutely sure of, of intention of what the pilot wants to do. Oh, so he doesn't have a, like a walkie-talkie or anything, he just goes by the bell. Well, we do have a, a, a basically a redundant system with the, with the radios to uh, just make absolutely sure of, of intentions and everything like that. <laughs> it's very interesting. So how often do you think you're going to be working on At this point, there are four captains. Okay, and, and uh, are you going to be taking part when this is opened to the public for uh, excursions? Yeah, I'm, I'm scheduled to take the first public excursion out on Sunday the 26th and then again on Memorial Day. So looking forward to that very much. It'll be fun. Did you take part in the restoration too? Yes, I did. Most everybody that's working on this has, haven't they? Uh, I believe so. What kind of experience do you have with uh, piloting the ship? Oh, I was in the Navy for uh, 12 years, active and inactive, and I've lived on the lake now for 20 years and uh, have a variety of power boats and mostly sailing, I guess, but uh, I've been around boats most of my life. How does a steamboat handle compared to other boats you've uh, used before? Oh, this is a totally different experience, and it's wonderful. <laughs> Just wonderful. Yeah, nice to have you. Does it, it handle a lot easier than other single-engine boats? Uh, because of the shape of the hull is what I'm saying. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. It's, it's just a wonderful, wonderful, she's a wonderful lady. So you kind of wonder how, how, why, how they knew so much about the shape of boats like this at that time. Because it wasn't a streetcar company that actually built the boat. Uh, yeah, I don't know the history of, of how they came up with this particular design of a boat. Uh, there are plenty of other people around here that know that okay. history, but... Uh, uh, there were many lake boats and river boats prior to uh, this one being built, particularly back on the East Coast, and, uh, and torpedo stern boats have been around for a while, although they're not terribly common. So uh, I guess the people who designed them just like the design, but it performs very, very well. We were talking to all the different gentlemen that had part in restoring the, the Minnehaha, and we found out that there are some women too. And this is Lori Hammond. And Lori, tell me a little bit about what your part was in helping to restore the Minnehaha. I started working when um, there was just a hole and some frames, and we took out the old frames and put in new frames. And um, just have done some painting, a little bit in the, on the engine and the boiler, not a lot, but some electrical, and just help wherever there was help needed. So. And, and I see you're in a uniform as a pilot, so how does that work out that you are a pilot? Um, I took the state exam for a pilot, and I've been training on here with the captains. And I also have gone through the engineering class, and I'm an engineer also. So. Oh, you are. You're one of the 25 trainees, or are you? Right. OK. All right. Uh, so as far as pilot, are you going to be able to uh, take over at the helm at some point in time if you need to? I'm hoping to, right. That'd so be a lot pretty soon. I've um, done some landings for, since all that so far, so. Strike the bolt at the bottom. 